welcome to Travelog. I'm Yan Ling. Another exciting destination of Travelog. It covers one sixth of total area of China, homes 47 diverse groups of diverse cultures, and also, most importantly, is the dreams of many adventures. Yes, you're right. We are in the most important part of Silk Road, Xinjiang. Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region is located in the northwest corner of China, middle of the Eurasia continent. It's the biggest province of China with 5,000 kilometer long boundary lines bordering seven countries Russia, Mongolia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India. There are direct and frequent flights available from Beijing, Shanghai, and Hong Kong to Urumqi where there you can connect your flights to many major cities such as Kashgar and Ili. In the middle of Xinjiang lies Tianshan Mountain. It's a natural boundary dividing Xinjiang into two parts, known as Northern Xinjiang and Southern Xinjiang. Each has very distinctive natural characters, customs and traditions. With a population of 15 million made up 47 multi-ethnic groups, Xinjiang is known for its diverse culture. The largest minority group in Xinjiang are the Uyghurs. The name means united or allied, a Turkic-speaking people close to 8 million, living mostly in Southern Xinjiang. Called the West Region Xiyu since Han Dynasty 200 BC, Xinjiang has always been a geographically remote yet strategically and culturally important area for central China. The ancient Silk Road passed through Xinjiang in three directions. During 200 BC to 16th century, the vast network of trade routes crisscrossed Eurasia, served as a major conduit for the transport of knowledge, information, and mature goods between East and West. Like Marco Polo and thousands of other adventurers did, traveling around the Silk Road in Xinjiang today still means constantly encountering surprises and discoveries. Urumqi is the most inland city of the whole world, where I'm standing is the center of Asia, well only geographically, but Urumqi is definitely the center of Xinjiang in every perspective. The name of the capital city of Xinjiang, Urumqi, means beautiful pasture. Not until 100 years ago, here was still a vast piece of grassland, hence its name. Today you will find Urumqi is a surprisingly cosmopolitan look like city. As a main gateway of anyone's well well west journey in Xinjiang, Urumqi is the perfect first stop where you can get some pretest of the diversity of Xinjiang and find everything you will possibly need for your further trip. You will find the city is not dressed up to be exotic for any tourist's sake. Instead, it radiates some real vitality that you often only find in a city of new and mixed. A place only an hour's ride away, Nanshan Pasture is a place you will find some trees of the green past of Yurumqi. There are no gas-driven vehicles are allowed inside the pasture area, 
So horse riding or horse cart behalf, a man is natural choice for transportation and sightseeing. Almost every gorge and hill offers spectacular view, making the best summer resort in the city's environs. So if you feel a bit chilly and would like to take a break, step in one of the Harsox people's yurt, an ethnic group lived here for centuries. Paying only $6 per night, you can have a yurt like this all to yourself for a night. Hasak <laughs> people are also known as people on the back of horse. You will find their lifestyle is very similar to the Mongolians. But in fact, they're very keen in preserving the language, music, and tradition of their own. Nowadays, many of them still prefer to live in traditional yards here, at least during the summer, enjoying the summer coolness and breathtaking view. Once you come to Wulunqi, you'll be always told not to miss the scenery of Heavenly Pond, Tianqi. Its astoundingly beautiful scenery hangs its name and was mentioned in many Chinese literature and folklore. The snow-capped mountain Pakda Peak is one part of Tianshan Mountain, symbol of Xinjiang, but the heavenly pond Tianchi is a symbol of Urumqi. Its beautiful scenery wouldn't disappoint you. Gazing out of the window of the coffee house by the lake, the turquoise water, fir forest, and the snow-capped mountain slightly reminds me of the scenery of Switzerland. If you are among those who are not satisfied with what you see until you find something to do in your trip, you will be happy to find Tianchi accommodate you in both ways. While enjoying the breathtaking view, you can keep yourself busy with boating, climbing, horse riding, parasailing in the summer, and even ice skating and skiing in the winter. Tianchi has become a more and more popular choice of hardcore adventurer travelers for rock climbing and camping. There are still few very destinated camping fields here. That also means you have all the freedom to pitch your tent. If more of a pleasure traveler, you can just keep back and relax, taking the stunning view of the fable nature. It's only another two hours ride will take you right back to the hodgepodge of the city world. Speciality from any part of Xinjiang in Ardaoqiao Market, South Urumqi. I'm looking for a shawl produced in Kashgar, and let's try if I can find it. Ardaoqiao Market is definitely the most famous market in Urumqi. It's a place to go to get some prettiest of Xinjiang. Vendors from northern and southern Xinjiang gather here and selling their original speciality. The overflowing treasure and jam takes time to rummage. To finally settle deal takes patience and sometimes even quibble. If you are really patient, wait until you came back from your Xinjiang trip. The second visit here will give you a better idea of the reasonable price and the souvenir value of the goods here. But sometimes shopping here is just too strong to resist.
A city always seems faceless until you get to meet some interesting people. I was lucky to get addressed to a coffee house from a traveler friend. It's located in a quiet corner of the city center. It's great to find some yummy cheesecakes in Urumqi. I've been told that many ingredients are thoughtfully sent by the owner's relatives from the cheese land, Poland. After nine years, this lady has made this place a popular hangout for travelers. I can't help feeling curious about reason of their passion for the city. I've been in Xinjiang now for one year, three months, uh -huh. and I really enjoy it. Actually, um, the reason why I've chosen Xinjiang instead of a big city is because of the different minorities, the different nationalities, all of course together with the fun that you have together. Um, on my island, we are a mixed community and we really enjoy it. Xinjiang people are traditionally known as a people of sung and dance. Kurumichi's young and modern are still proved to be people of reason in the blood. There's no restraint by whom inviting whom. Once the music's on, everyone's off the seat. It has to be the right music though. Wei Gursh, of course. Perfect tour ideally ends with a full stomach. No Urumqi visit without stopping by Wuyi Market can be considered a complete one. You simply can't afford to miss the opportunity of walking by in this street, seeing the other side of the city at night, with his lights on and hair done. The market starts packing up around 10 p.m. It sounds like Urumqi people live a pretty late night life, but there's Remember, there is a two hours time difference between Urumqi and Beijing. <laughs> How can you resist from something so tempting and someone so incredibly persuasive? <laughs> That's a grilled lamb, most famous all through China, but origin here in Xinjiang. Tastes great. The best part of Wee Market is it will fill your stomach with great food without emptying your wallet. Anything you try won't cost more than two dollars, so why not stroll around and try them all? Beijing time is the official time used in Xinjiang. Ulumuchi is located two time zones away from the capital, so be prepared with slight jet lag symptoms. The normal working hour in Ulumuchi starts around 9.30, and a lunch break of more than three hours is not unusual here. Companies and owners' corporations are encouraged to participate in the wage protection movement by providing cleaning workers and security guards wages not lower than the relevant average market rates and written employment contracts. Those who participate will be awarded a logo. Wage protection movement, working together, making it better. Driving out of Ulumuchi eastward, it's a barren desert, but only two hours drive away eastward there. 
is an oasis of turpan, a luxury spring waiting for me. Okay, let's go. But before that, this China's biggest wind power plant here is a spectacular scenery on the road, but also reminds a traveler of something about their destination. Yes, Turpan is one of the windiest areas in China, meaning the lowest place in Weigu language. Turpan is famous for many other top notches. Located 80 meters below sea level by average, Turpan is the second lowest place on the earth, following the Dead Sea of Jordan. Called Fireland for Zhou Chinese in the past, the depression's temperature can easily hover to more than 40 centigrade in the summer. The Flaming Mountain is one of the hottest spots in China. All this might have given you enough reason to avoid Tokem, but you shouldn't. The reasons are plenty, maybe not climatically. During the Han Dynasty 200 BC, Turpan was a crucial part of the Silk Road. Today, to most people in China, Turpan is associated with grain, oasis, and fruits. If you are a grape lover, Turpan is your paradise. On the western face of the Philippine Mountains, east of Turpan, lies a grape valley. Despite the sweltering summer heat that hits Turpan, this five-mile-long valley remains cool and pleasant, an ideal first stop for a traveler. The valley is filled with trellis to walkways, patios, and outdoor tables, where you can sit and pick the grapes over your head and enjoy the delicious meal complemented by the locally produced wine and excellent dance performance. Besides the music and food, I really enjoyed an excellent bottle of wine labeled with brewed in Xinjiang in my under the tree dining. I found out limited to the production, many local wineries don't distribute the wines to areas outside of Xinjiang, so here is still a hidden treasure for any wine-loving travelers. Only in Turpan you can find so tasty wine made of the best quality grapes produced here in Turpan. The technique of ancient winemaking was introduced to Turpan 2,000 years ago from Mediterranean. But because of the restriction of Islam, this technique has been stagnated also for 2,000 years. Also today, in a small winery in this grape valley, you can still have a look at how wine was made like 2,000 years ago. It's actually just a giant juice presser. After seven days, seven to nine days, it will be becoming the tasty one like this. Fresh. Tasty.
What do I prefer? Cheers, both. In Turpan, 4,000 tan grapes are produced each year. The Grape Valley is a major base. Famous for seedless white grape, the Manites or Mare's Napo grape, and red and black grapes. Since wine is not a major product, you can guess by now what proud Turpan farmers do with their harvests, raisins, and lots of them. is abundant with grapes, of course, recent. Here we have more than 600 different variations of taste. All have contains more than 70% of sugar, really sweet. But not only tasty, many reasons are believed to be some Uyghur kind of traditional medicine. This is also raisin called, uh, meaning tiny raisin, believed can cure measles and even energize your blood circulation. It might never occur to you how grapes are dried into raisins, but you will probably be curious what these houses are for when you are in Turpan. Standing on the verge of the valley, this so-called Liangfang shaded house are the secret of Xinjiang's famous best quality raisins. The summer of Turpan is extremely hot but hardly rains, so those houses are perfectly adapted to the climate and built with sun-dried adobes and a laid to leave space for ventilation. It provides a perfect yeah. condition for grapes to be dried without being directly exposed under the sun. Only in this way, the luxurious grain color can be preserved when they are dried to raisins. Not all sorts of grapes are good for making raisins. The choosing, picking, and arranging process is crucial. These grapes are going to be hand here for 40 to 60 days until to be dried inside the Liangfang to the desired stage. Standard of real Xinjiang quality reason. The best time to visit the Great Valley is in August and early September. Kilogram is the normal weight measurement in Xinjiang. When you eat in a restaurant in the Great Valley, the grapes served on the table are free of charge. But you're risked to be fined if you pick up grapes above your hat randomly while walking the valley. Gazing down to the luxurious oasis created in the middle of barren desert, you can't help admiring how much people can make a difference and how important water is in fostering life and this ancient civilization. The carriage system is an ancient irrigation system created 2,000 years ago, diverting water from glaciers to the farmland. It's comprised of a series of wells and linking underground channels. By using this underground channel, it saves the water from evaporate by the hot weather and a strong wind. Sitting inside this underground channel is really cool, thinking about scorching hot weather outside. In Turpin County alone, there are more than 470 systems totaling over 1,000 miles tunnels. It's considered as one of the three great projects in China, with the other two being the Great Wall and the Great Canal. Nowadays, most of villages in Turpin County are still using the water irrigated by carriage system. 
Tuyugo, a small town 50 km east of Turpin County, is seemingly just one of such villages, but it's not, at least not to all the Muslims in China. This small village of 200 is considered as a piece of holy land to Chinese Muslims. It's believed that five Islamic sacred men are buried here. So many Muslims come here paying pilgrimage before they can afford the money and time going to Mecca. As a conduit point of many religions in the past millenniums, it's not very surprising to see Tibetan Buddhist elements are permitted into Islam here in Tuyugo. And the mosque of Tuyugo is the only mosque in China where women are allowed to go in and pray. From Turpin County to Tuyugo is quite a journey. Two hours ride on the bumpy road, not very accessible or appealing to many. Thanks to that, it saved the village from being just another tourist attraction. Strolling around the village, you will feel its ambience of ease is almost hypnotizing. No one seems mind the hour or day, or the curious people with cameras. I finally get rid of the feeling of seeing the sights behind the window of the car, but finally surrounded in the real world by smiling faces. After two minutes conversation, my new friends ask me to visit their home. It must be the fastest developed friendship I have ever had, but somehow in Tuyugo it's not strange at all. The hospitality they show me is just amazing. When the music is on, don't understand Uyghurish is not a problem anymore. The beat, the warmth are all contagious. <laughs> Finally, I at least got one movement right. The vigorous gesture of saying thank you and goodbye. After a few days on the road, back to a bit comfort of civilization feels after all not so bad. Although to most travelers, hotels is nothing more than a hot shower, a nice meal, a comfortable pillow. But after all these miles, you maybe feel a hotel like this is a treat you deserve. It makes you feel like in a miniature of an oasis. It's Turpin. The color of Xinjiang comes with multiple shades of it, one word for it, sweet. Sweet grapes, sweet watermelon, sweet people. You can never get enough out of it. I'm Yanling, see you next time. Sweet dreams.